Greetings, those of you who hopefully aren't hoping to buy any Blood Bowl minis in the near future. <laughs> Welcome to Miniatures Rundown. I'm Josh. I'm CJ. And today we're talking about money. Money, money, money. Specifically, I'm sure you've heard the news or seen the news or watched several reaction videos, far more informed and entertaining than our own, about Games <laughs> Unlikely. Workshop. Unlikely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but none. None so attractive. Mm. About Games Workshop uh, is increasing their prices again. Yeah. So, um, specifically... Right. Everything's going up. Well, no, not everything. Not everything is going up, yeah. A lot of things, most things are going up at least 5%. Uh, some things, mm -hmm. including books, um, specialist games, and some other sort of things that's the, that's the are going one. up 10%. Mm -hmm. And some very specific things, metal miniatures and Blood Bowl, and some others we don't yeah. know yet, are going up 20%. They couldn't give us around 25? <laughs> Come on. They... they Someone in marketing told them you can't go to twenty five. Oh, that'll 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 lose people. That's a, that's a whole quarter. Just like yeah, oh. a fifth doesn't sound very much, but a whole quarter that, sounds that's... like a lot. Yeah, well, like just <laughs> like my buddy Grant says on his podcast, marketers ruin everything. Marketers <laughs> ruin everything. Um, so we kind of wanted to touch base on this and just, mm -hmm. I guess, we're giving our reactions, but also talk a little bit about this. Yeah, because this is. There's a lot of knee-jerk reactions. Mm -hmm. Games Workshop, increasing their prices again. Oh, Games no! Games Workshop has to increase prices because of inflation. Games Workshop has to increase prices because of global pan pandemic. Yep. Games Workshop isn't in ha doesn't have to increase prices. They just want to boost their bottom line, and they're taking advantage of us all. And I, I think we're going to take a little more mm. nuanced take on yeah. this, because I think everything I just said is true, including yeah. <laughs> that last part. Mm. So let's talk about the world we live in. It um, sucks. Next question. <laughs> Uh, no, so, hey, global pandemic is a problem still. It's still a problem. Get your vaccinations. Yeah. <laughs> get vaxxed, get boosted. I just got mine yesterday, and by golly, it knocked me on my butt. But really? You only got your third yesterday? Yeah. Oh, my God, you got it eventually. Hey, better late than it never. Was one of my, <laughs> it was one of my New Year's resolutions, and then I got COVID! <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, right. You can't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that tracks. That old chestnut. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, pandemic is still a thing. And what what does the pandemic actually affect as far as pricing? Why does that matter? It's not just it's not that people are spending less. Yeah. So, here's what happened. The cost of shipping things around the world has skyrocketed. Um, colloquially, I've heard, and, you know, anecdotally, I've heard that whereas once you could get a shipping crate for, you know, three to six grand, mm -hmm. nowadays, if you can find a shipping container, it's... 20 to 30 grand. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah. It turns out that people don't want to ship places, especially from overseas. Well, it's not even that. It's just that so many shipping containers are stuck. Yeah. They, they're stuck in ports. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody in at one of the uh, major Chinese ports gets sick, mm -hmm. they shut it down. Yeah. Like nothing leaves. So stuff what an idea. stuck there. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, some people are taking that to the, the solution should be we should just stop doing that. Not what I'm advocating for no, here, just to be clear. But that's outside the scope of our discussion. The reality is, is that shipping things has gotten very expensive. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, is that the cost of paper has skyrocketed internationally. Printing books mm -hmm. is a lot more expensive this year than it was last year or the year before. I have yet to hear a good reason. Um. Again, it's a combination of shipping and oh, okay. raw materials. Problems. Raw materials shortages. It's a, it's a combination of both, you know, the usual factories printing presses are shutting down because right. people get sick, mm -hmm. but also having trouble getting the actual paper. The demand for paper is far outstripping the supply right now. If you have any friends who are like major into the book world, mm -hmm. this is massively affecting new releases of books. I'm yeah. not talking about just wargaming books. Just, yeah, just books. Books. It's mm -hmm. a huge problem. Yeah. So when GW says the price of printing is going up, they're not lying. It's not because they are just like, well, I guess screw those other people. But like, you know what else has increased in price pretty drastically over the past couple of years? Plastic. Uh, plastic? Less or, so. or not plastic, resin. Resin and metal. Metal. Uh, Infinity, the uh, a sci-fi skirmish game by Corvus Belli, mm -hmm. is transitioning uh, from their tried and true long-standing metal models into plastic. Um, mm -hmm. Spoiler, I never got into Infinity largely because of the metal models. Yeah. I, I hate metal models. I, if you guys remember the video that I did on uh, Warcaster when that first dropped, uh, link up in the here. I bought Warcaster 2, yeah. put them together, and didn't want to put them together anymore. Yeah, I, I, I popped that box open, and I'm like, oh, these are these are metal. This is awful. <laughs> They're great for filling a sock and beating someone to death with, but not great for putting together as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but metal is, like, the, the white metal used to make miniatures. Mm-hmm. 
because I think it's the tin specifically. It's the tin. It's yeah. specifically the tin has increased in price drastically as demand has increased drastically. Right. So metal models. So when they say metal models are going up 20%, they're not pulling that out of their butts. It's like, yo, the metal models are going up this much because that's how much it's ever, actually cost. Ever notice that all those or most of those boutique miniatures companies that sell things in resin tend to be based in Poland and Russia? Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Because it's the cost of living and the say. price of labor is so much cheaper there. That's one of the few places you can still make resin miniatures and turn a decent profit. Mm -hmm. And there are other places that are not based in those countries. Right. Um, Creature Caster makes fantastic resin models. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic. Is it about this big, too? As long as you don't mind the boobs. Um, they're based in Canada, <laughs> yep. I think. I want to say West Canada. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's uh, something like Anvil Industries in Britain. Which, yeah. Speaking of Britain. Brexit's still a thing that's happening. It's still a thing, and we're watching a country implode in slow motion. Without getting into the politics of it, um, you, CJ, without getting into boomers. the politics of it. Y'all boomers! Without getting into the politics boomers. of it, CJ. <laughs> don't make me hit the shock button again. <laughs> bad. Okay. Bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, without getting into the politics of it. Brexit's still a thing. That country is having shipping issues with other countries, Europe and America and everywhere else. Yep. <laughs> On top of COVID. So when GW says it is more it is more expensive to ship things, again, they're not just pulling this out of their butts. Mm -hmm. The flip side to this is... Unfortunately, you remember the last time that they raised prices? And the time before? And the time before that. And the time before? Yeah. We're kind of looking at a boy who cried wolf situation here. Mm -hmm. GW raises prices a lot. And mm -hmm. this time, every reason they've given is absolutely true. Yeah. Last time, maybe not so not much. Not necessarily. So now, when they've had a good reason to raise prices, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they made this bed, and I am content to let them lie in it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's I feel no pity for them. No, I really don't either. Uh it's like every time the gas prices would go up like incremental like substantially just for arbitrary reasons like, like they have recently, like forever, but like uh, we've gone up 20 cents in the past 3 weeks, yeah, at least I around know. here in northern Indiana, mm -hmm. and I'm not pleased about it. My car is running low on gas. Yeah, mine's, uh yeah, but so like they're all their their excuse is always, "Oh, well, the refineries, oh, well, the factory." Oh, meh, meh, meh. It's like, wow. Like, it may be true, but, like, that's the same thing you've trotted out for, you know, decades at this point. Maybe maybe oil is not sustainable. Well, and then that's, <laughs> you know, that we get into other problems where Games Workshop has a margin on their products. Yeah. And from what we know, it's a pretty darn big margin. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen how much they sell to the store here. Yeah. Uh, how much we buy them for. Mm. And how much profit we get and how much profit they get. Yep. Um, their margins are pretty big, and they could choose to eat these costs mm -hmm. and not pass the costs on to the customer. They have chosen to pass them on to the customer. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for this, I mean, you know, again, I really don't want to make this a political economics episode or economic political episode, whatever. But you know, where they are, is the difference, comrades? They are a company, yeah, and they made a lot of money last year. Mm -hmm. They have to make more this year. It's the golden rule of the investment-based economic system in which we all mm. live right now is that if you do not make more money than you did previously, that is your investors are going to say, well, I could have put my money somewhere else, mm -hmm. and they'll withdraw. And you, and that's bad. If for a publicly traded company, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, legally. Yeah, there is a... There like, are. You are not allowed, uh -huh. as a CEO of a, or CFO of a publicly traded company, no. to willingly do something that tanks your stock. <laughs> Unless you're Elon Musk. Uh, well... Yeah, unless you're rich enough to get rid of over the consequences. Yeah. Um, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Not so supposed to be. Telling people, hey, we're not raising prices. Uh, consumers, nice savings for you. Yeah. Unless they can demonstrably, demonstrably prove that yeah. that increases sales, mm -hmm. the person who made that decision would get in trouble. Yeah. And like, and none of that's an excuse, because I don't think any of that is a good thing. Um, Consider, okay, we see, oh, man, GW raises prices again and again and again and again. How many times do you think they actually did just eat the cost, though, like in between there? Well, Who's to say? I wanna we don't know. I want to shout out a wonderful video by Midwinter Minis. I think a lot of people have seen it now. Oh, probably, yeah. But um, he did a uh, an actual discussion of mm -hmm. how much given kits have increased and kept up with inflation or not. Mm -hmm. And the very TLDR, I'm going to link it in the description below because it's a wonderful video. Mm -hmm. You should watch it. Um, the TLDR yeah. is that troops and vehicles 
for 40k. Yeah, I think he only did the 40k because that's what yeah, he does. He doesn't play Ultae Age of Sigmar. Right. Um, but there's no, there's nothing to compare Age of Sigmar to. Right, either, troops so. and vehicles uh, have more or less just kept pace with inflation. Yeah, just um, roughly, and actually a little lower in some cases. Mm -hmm. Barring some things like Cadians, which skyrocketed in price when right. they got their upgrades through, which is not worth a fifteen dollar increase. Mm. That aside, um, <laughs> but characters however. have gone through the roof. Yeah, the thirty five dollar characters. The reason those feel so expensive, mm -hmm. and those are going to be thirty six dollar characters if they do increase in price. Yeah, we didn't get a, an exhaustive list of what is increasing and what is not. We won't mm -hmm. find out until March seventh. By the way, is the deadline. Um. The characters have skyrocketed, and um, mostly it's characters is where the, the, yeah, the real... Yeah, it's mostly characters. The price increase has happened is characters, and that char includes, like, big monster characters. Mm -hmm. Those have gotten a lot more expensive. You're not right, wrong yeah. if you feel like they have. Yeah, but they've also gotten substantially larger. Well, and that is in the a other thing. The tech and the technology has gotten substantially better. Mm -hmm. um, like, the, de the detail on the kits coming out nowadays oh, yeah. is it's not... Great. GW's uh, customer service might be a little wonky, and they're... Um, sh pr shipping and production might be a little, a little wonky, but their uh, production of miniatures and design quality ten oh, no, continues to be the best in the business. Yep. And none of that's an excuse, though. And so we mentioned Blood Bowl. Right. Let's talk about Blood Bowl specifically. Blood Bowl's going up 20%. Yep. Blood Bowl teams are going up 20%. Mm -hmm. y you mentioned you have a theory and... I, have a do I do have a theory. Justification's not the right word. Yeah. Uh, well, justification may be on the part of the people who are responsible for sure, the price. Sure. So well, Blood Bowl. It's called an excuse. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> so Blood Bowl, right? Blood Bowl is a specialist game. It is a specialist game in which you have one team, uh, and you are not required. They do not bring out new players for teams very often. They have the special, the star players. Star but players, yeah. But, you know, you don't have to go out and buy the new tank for your Blood Bowl team. You don't have to buy the new special character to be competitive. You know, that sort of thing. You play Tyranids, you don't have to either. So Blood Bowl is a game where you don't have to buy new minis all the time, or really ever, if you're doing well enough and you enjoy the minis you have. And those minis might be five years old in some cases, ten years old. Of course, the second edition came out. You, you know, everybody has orcs and everybody has... And a new Blitz Bowl coming out. And too. a what? new Blitz to, um yeah. Barnes & Noble. I think it's Barnes & Noble. Yeah. I gotta get my hands it on is. that. Mm. It looks cool. Yeah. But... Oh, it's got Skaven. And it's got Skaven. Weird rat boy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. That's the other guy. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, but you don't have to get new teams and new players all the time. Uh or really ever if you don't want to. But it costs GW money to make those. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to get the new stuff, then guess what? Sorry, Charlie. So it's going to it's going to be more expensive because there's less. So what you're kind of going yeah. for is that because it's almost a utilitarianism thing. That, Unfortunately. But that by increasing the prices on a special scheme that fewer people buy, mm -hmm. they can still make more money while affecting fewer people. They they can make they can make a uh, relatively same amount of money. Like, and that's not like because people who are into Blood Bowl are into Blood Bowl, right? Well, it's also called the 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 sucker thing, <laughs> where people who are into it are going to buy it anyway, so we can charge what we want. Yeah. Which is kind of GW in general. Yeah, it's been that way for a while. But I understand, I understand why they would do it to Blood Bowl specifically, so, because there's a large enough player base that it it's worth it, but it's not such a huge player base that there's going to be a huge backlash against it. And the people who don't want to buy the blood, new Blood Bowl stuff will just keep playing with what they have anyway. My so people are going to keep doing that. My is that it does make it more difficult to, for new people to get into Blood Bowl. And there it is. Now, we're not going to talk at length about this because, spoiler, I think we're going to do another epi uh, an episode uh, on getting into Games Workshop now versus getting into Games Workshop when I got into Games Workshop. Yeah. Because <laughs> when I got into games you know how they say you don't know a golden age until it's past? Mm -hmm. I think the golden age is past. Yeah. Now, kind of like Civ Five, where you can have multiple golden ages, that doesn't mean that we'll never get another one. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's a different discussion. I also wanted to talk about books. Yeah. So, the printing cost of books. There is a reason why Games Workshop releases have not had their books out until a lot later than they used to. Yeah. Getting books printed is expensive and delayed as heck right now. Yeah. Paper shortages, printer shortages, general shipping delays. Mm -hmm. My gosh. 
That being said, this is once again, this is a, they made their bed, and I am content to watch them lie in it and get hit with pillows. Yeah. Those pillows are filled with metal miniatures. Oof. <laughs> um, because you know what? People wouldn't be salty about the book price increases if you weren't running us on a book treadmill so badly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Daughters of Cain players are absolutely thrilled that in addition to having to buy another battle tome uh, only slightly more than a year after the launch of the last one, mm -hmm. that they also get to pay 10% more for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure that's thrilled. thrilling. Now, of course, they don't have to buy the battle tome unless they want to keep with updated rules and play mm -hmm. matched play. Functionally, and you know, Games Workshop has designed its game ecosystem. Yep. Games ecosystems, all of them, to in that both in the way the game works and also the mentality of the communities around them. Games Workshop has made it so that you need to have the most updated rules at basically all times in mm -hmm. order to play the game. Yeah, which are easier or harder to get depending on how much you're willing to. And this is why we call it the book treadmill. Mm -hmm. You have to buy the chapter approved every year. Um, you have to buy the mission pack. That one's a little more... At least chapter approved in the mission pack are together. Yeah, but now you have to buy them every... Is it quarter now? No, every... every Six months. Six months. Okay, so, so every half year, mm -hmm. biannually, you have to buy the new mission pack. In the unfortunately, chapter yeah, and unfortunately they didn't put the um, the core rules in the back of them like they did. They sure didn't. Nope. Because it costs too god dang much, but we're still going to sell it to you at 40 bucks. Yep. So the value goes down and the price goes up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they increase the prices of all the codexes and tomes partially by with the excuse of, well, you get a digital code uh -huh. for the abhorrently terrible app. <laughs> I'm not over that. Um, Which one? Yeah, the, 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 book, the book one is what stings me the most because mm -hmm. I understand how many books they're trying to sell me. Yeah. And we'll probably talk about this more for our getting into new games thing. And we yeah. might even title it why i haven't gotten into 40k <laughs> um and the books are a huge part of it mm -hmm. yeah no that makes sense because people come up and like i've had people come up to h of sigma and say okay so i need a book yeah so here's my army and um let's say uh okay so i, I play beasts of chaos <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah that's the first thing is i'm sorry you look them in the soul <laughs> in their eyes and you see their soul How come you never you go, did this to me who hurt you because well, i know who hurt you oh you uh <laughs> damn it <laughs> And you, get, and you say, I'm very sorry you're playing Beasts of Chaos. But let's say you're playing Beasts of Chaos. And you go, well, um, so if you want to play Beasts of Chaos, you need to buy the Battle Tome and the Core Wolves. Okay. And, you know, in our friendly group, the reality is, is that, like, the uh, General's Handbook, yeah. you actually kind of don't need because someone will loan you theirs. Yeah, no, but we pass you, those things around, like... Yeah, we pass... Yeah. Oh, not, God. Let's not get my, into that. My General's Handbook goes on the table and is open for everybody to see. Yeah. But you need your Core Wolves and you need your Battle Tome. Yeah. But then you go, well, you know, they haven't gotten a Battle Tome update in a long time. They're going to probably get a new one this edition. Mm -hmm. Could be next year. Could be the summer. There's a Chaos book coming summer. Yeah. I, it's as we probably not going to be Basic Chaos. No, but it could be. <laughs> it could be. Or let's say that, um, you know, I want to, let's say a guy comes and says he wants to get into Fire Slayers. Mm -hmm. What do you tell him to buy, book-wise? <laughs> Nothing. Wait a couple months. Bingo! Yeah. You either, well, you buy the core rule book. Yeah, you buy the core rule book, learn about the Fire Slayers, learn about the world. And we'd say, um borrow Kevin's battle tome. Yeah. We have a very strong community here. We'd say, hey, uh, there's Kevin the Fire Slayers player. He's not playing Fire Slayers right now. Yeah. He'll loan you his tome. It's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't tell them to buy the Fire Slayers battle tome because there's a new one coming in a couple months. Yeah. And you oh, rapidly hit this point uh -huh. where there's always a new one coming in a couple months. Mm -hmm. The treadmill gets so bad you can't ever keep up without spending ludicrous amounts of money. Right. Which if you're trying to make line go up for the line gods... Is great. Human sacrifice pleases the line. If you are someone buying the books, that really sucks. Mm -hmm. So, on the one hand, yeah, this price increase, this whole price increase, books, everything. Mm. Is it justified from the sense of the state of the world? It is. Yeah. I mean, because the state of the world is uh, the way it is because of... It's a cluster bleep. Yeah. And, um, you know, GW is a company that, just like any other, and... They have a duty to their public to... They have a duty to their <laughs> investors. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they have a duty... Yeah, like legally, they have to... They have a legal duty to, to make more money, money than they did last year. Yeah. So they can't pass Whatever the savings on... Whatever it takes. So they cannot pass the savings on to you. And if we had a if we had a system of laws in, the, in this country or other countries that made a wit of sense for the common consumer, this wouldn't be... 
I'm hitting the shock button again, CJ. Oh, I'm starting to like it now. <laughs> oh, gosh. So CJ's playing Slash. Anyway, um, blah, 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 blah. on the other hand, people are really mad about this. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell. The point of this video is not that you should not be mad. Mm -hmm. Because. Uh, no, be mad. Be mad. Yeah, Games yeah. Workshop made this bed. Mm -hmm. And they can sleep in it, nails and all, yeah. for all I care. Yeah. If you weren't running us on a treadmill, you wouldn't be so darn salty about your books. And tired. If your app wasn't so hackneyed and thrown together and put together over a lunch break and existed only to push animation to get people into the world, uh, maybe I'd be more accepting of you including a digital code mm -hmm. and putting it in there. Um, if it, uh, Yeah, it, that's... If you, if you weren't changing rules so often that I felt like I had to get more models so often, maybe I wouldn't be upset about the model increases. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't care about the metal models because personally, no, nobody likes metal models. There are people who do, and those people are wrong and dangerous. <laughs> those people vote. Think about that. <laughs> no, they're too busy putting their metal models together. <laughs> you can't vote while you're holding the super glue there. You know, <laughs> waiting for it to dry for thirty years. We've got activator, and it didn't work because it's metal. Anyway, so I guess if we have any kind of conclusion, I realize this is not a particularly great take. Because it's not fun or entertaining, saying, well, they're right, but you can be angry is yeah. uh, not a particularly spicy thing to put they're, in a thumbnail. They're correct, but you are also correct. Yes. Like, for once, they're justified, but you're justified in being mad for the last five or six increases that were less justified. And we're justified in being mad about the increasing state of the treadmill. Yeah. The, the, the Do I look like I get on a treadmill very much? Come on! <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's the book treadmill, so I don't know. It's made of paper and hard to run on. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see what the future holds. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, you know, I'm really hoping that, like, the Daughters of Cain Codex is kind of a casualty of COVID. Yeah. Like, they may be meant to release the last one earlier. And I maybe, think so. And maybe they meant I to release. I almost feel, like, certain. And they maybe they meant to release this one later. Uh -huh. But this is the book they could get. Yeah. This is the book that came into Nottingham on the boat. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, here it is. Okay. I mean, Sylvaneth was supposed to be first, but Sylvaneth ain't here yet. Mm -hmm. So Sylvaneth is just cursed, isn't it? Yeah. God. <laughs> Sylvaneth managed to get stuck on a boat before it was cool. Oh, <laughs> well, that was Brexit's fault. <laughs> and no, that was pre Brexit. No, it wasn't. It wasn't? No. Oh. Because I remember the video that GW put out about it. it was like, yeah, hey, it turns out that when you have uh, uh, an agreement with the EU. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. that was Brexit's call. Yeah. Still, Sylvaneth, uh -huh. Sylvaneth, getting delayed before it was cool. Speaking of things that are not terribly cool. Hi. I've been Josh. And I've been CJ. And we'll see you next time on Miniatures Rundown.